Okay, so you went and bought yourself a tractor, spent a lot of money, dealer dropped it off on your front doorstep, didn't explain nothing and took off. Well, that's a stinky, stinky situation to be in. Let's dig us out of that manure pile. So we'll walk around this tractor, talk about just the basic stuff that every modern tractor has. There's always variations on tractors, but every tractor on the market today will have this stuff. Um, show you how to use it and uh, get you out there working your tractor real easy. So the first thing that we'll look at on this tractor is on the front end. You got yourself a loader. Most every compact tractor on the market has a loader on it. It's a useful tool. Yours probably has it too. If you're considering buying a tractor without a loader, don't do it, get the loader. So these are loader arms and a bucket for scooping stuff. Of course, we've got tires in a tractor. Who would have thought? These are industrial tires. There's lots of different types of tires out there. On the rear end is what's called a three-point hitch. Every compact tractor on the market is going to have a three-point, and every large tractor on the market will have a three-point. Why is it called a three-point? Because there's one point here, one point here, and one point there that hooks to an implement. So it's a three-point system. This will raise and lower. This is called your top link, and then you got your lower link arms. So top link, lower link arms. The lower link arms raise and lower. The top link just keeps things from flopping around, and you can adjust these. And then down here, we get a little duber here. This is called a PTO. It's a power takeoff, so it takes power from the engine back here, and it spins. We'll get through that later. And then this has a drawbar too. This draw bar you can pull out and it'll have holes in it. You can use that for pulling stuff around. There's a fuel tank. I bet your tractor has one of those. Probably has a steering wheel too. This one has brakes on it that are called cutting brakes. So it's two brake pedals. You can pull a pin and it'll separate these brakes so you can brake your left wheel or your right wheel with it. I just keep mine locked together, no big deal. Every tractor on the market will have headlights and most all of them will have flashers. There's also some optional buttons here we're not gonna to touch right now. Right here is a very important thing. This is a throttle. Every tractor on the market will have a hand throttle. You raise this to raise your RPMs and lower it to lower your RPMs. Unlike a car, this has a hand throttle. Uh, cars, you, you throttle up with your feet. Well, a tractor, in some cases you can throttle up with your feet, but in all cases you can throttle up with your hand. This little guy here, this turns on the PTO on the back. Your tractor might have a lever that does the same thing. There may, may be a clutch you push in order to engage that lever. So that's something you gotta read your instructions about or talk to your dealer about, but it's gonna be yellow. PTO color is always yellow as far as I've ever seen. This tractor is a hydrostatic transmission. That means it has a forward pedal and a backwards pedal. Some hydrostatic tractors, instead of having a uh, forward pedal and a backwards pedal, will have a banana pedal. So it'll rotate forward and backwards like that, you're full will rock on it, but this one, forward pedal and a backwards pedal. There's a control here. This is your joystick. And you see some button, there's some uh, bucket pictures on here. That's because this is for controlling your front loader and the bucket, we'll get into that. And again, this is a hydrostatic tractor. So this one has a gear selector. So hydrostatic transmissions. We'll still have, well, maybe not a gear selector, but a range selector. So maybe high, medium, low, maybe one, two, three, and a neutral. This lever here controls your three point. I know that because I got a little picture here that looks vaguely like a lower three point arm. So lever goes down, three point goes down, lever goes up. Whoops, lever goes up, three point goes up. Right now it's in the down position because the tractor's off and I left it in the down position then. 
but that will move and stay on this tractor. Some of them have a spring where they'll only hold in place when the tractor's running as long as you're holding it. And then once you let go, the three point stops moving. We'll get into that later. This one we're not gonna talk about right now. This is draft control, optional feature. There's a couple buttons over here too that are cruise control, again, optional features. And then a can of WD-40. That's also an optional feature that I would advise anybody with a tractor to have. Every tractor will also have a seat belt. There's a reason for that. It's because it'll save your life. And every modern tractor will have ROPS or a rollover protection system. So that's this big metal hoop here. So if this tractor rolls over, the ROPS will save you from imminent death as long as you're wearing your seat belt. That's our safety talk for the day. <laughs> Okay, what else is on this tractor? Uh, this one also has four-wheel drive. Kind of hard to tell, but that's what this is. You're not supposed to step on it. You push it down, pull it up to turn it into four-wheel drive. But this is a dirty tractor because it gets used. But here it tells you that's two-wheel or four-wheel. Most modern tractors on the market are four-wheel drive. And then this pedal right here, that's a rear locker. Again, most every tractor on the market has this. If you're out stuck in the mud, one of your rear, rear wheels is spinning, you can stop, push that down, it'll lock the wheels together. We'll go over that again as well. And then last but not least, we were looking at the three point on the back and saw the lever to raise and lower it. This mystifies so many people. This is supposed to signify that you twist this to increase or decrease how fast your three point will drop. So you turn this all the way left towards the rabbit and it'll, your three point will drop fast. You turn it towards the tortoise, it'll drop slow. That's so if you have something heavy on the back, it doesn't just instantly crash to the ground when you lower your three point. You can also lock it if you turn it all the way over to the tortoise. And a lot of times these will get bumped, get locked in the up position and people can't figure out why the three point won't drop. That's why. In every tractor I've ever seen, it's located under the seat between your ankles. Okay, so we've gone over just basic features on a tractor. Next thing we gotta do is talk about well, how to use them. Okay, now before you even start your tractor, there's some stuff you should check first, just to make sure A, you don't get murdered, B, your tractor doesn't get destroyed, and C, you can actually operate this tractor. Um, so first thing to do is uh, walk around your tractor. First thing I like to check is my tires. Do my tires have air in them? Yep, looks like they do. But you can go up to them, shove your knee up against them, and make sure they don't give. If that tire gives, probably time to stop. Make sure you got some air in your tires. You've got a bucket on your loader, and the bucket is attached to the loader somehow. This is a very popular setup called a skid steer quick disconnect. Most modern tractors will have this. Some sub subcompact tractors won't. You lift these up to remove the bucket, press them down to make sure the bucket is attached to your loader. These were sitting up, so I'd be out driving around and all of a sudden the bucket could flop off. Boy, that'd be dangerous. <laughs> so we'll push these down. Okay, buckets locked and loaded, ready to go. We can also walk around here, just make sure no hoses are flopping around, throwing fluid everywhere. Maybe look underneath, you know, do you see any, any oil leaks? That would be a big problem. There's a bunch of oil on the ground under your tractor. We just want to make sure everything looks like it's attached. You know, maybe you have an implement on the back of your tractor. Is it connected at all three points? One, two, three. Hey, sure is. Does anything back here look like it's fallen off or there are bolts laying on the ground? Just take a good quick look. If you have an implement that uses a PTO, is the PTO shaft attached? Okay, I think we've done our safety check. Now, of course, if you read your owner's manual, it'll also tell you to check your fluids and filters and stuff before jumping on your tractor. That's probably a good idea to do. But let's jump on the tractor. We'll go over how to start the tractor. Here we go. Now, before we start our tractor, <laughs> Make sure your rollover protection is on. Make sure your ROPs are up. Okay, I see a lot of people driving around without their ROPs on. Bad news, these save lives. That's why they were created. Tractors were famous for murdering people. 
Now they're a lot less famous for that because of the ROPS. That was the number one thing that saved lives and it only works in conjunction with the seat belt. You must have your seat belt on to keep you within the protective area of your ROPS. I'm a seat belt junkie, I believe in them. I've seen how they've saved lives. It's okay to wear your seat belt. You're still cool, don't worry. So we've got our seat belt on right now. Our ROPs are up and pinned in so they can't just roll or flip on us if we roll. Now we can take our key and put it in the ignition. Okay, we can almost take the key and put it in the ignition. I know I'm, I'm being a real buzzkill here. The first thing you wanna make sure before you start your tractor, well, no, I guess the second or third or fourth thing you wanna check. There's a lot of stuff to check. Uh, make sure your hand throttle is down. Make sure you are out of gear, or at least in neutral. Make sure your brake is depressed. And make sure your PTO is in the off position. You also gotta make sure your posterior is in the seat. There's safety switches on modern tractors that prevent you from starting them in unsafe conditions, like with your PTO turned on, or with your brake not engaged, or your butt not in the seat. And a lot of them have transmission safety switches too, making sure the transmission's in neutral. Um, now this again is a hydrostatic tractor. We'll get into the differences between hydrostatic tractors and manual transmissions, but in a manual transmission, you make sure you're completely out of gear before starting. Okay, the key is in the ignition. We should just turn it, right? Uh, no. So on diesel tractors, which every modern tractor is a diesel, they will have glow plugs. So you put your key in, some of them you turn to the left to get your glow plugs going. So all of a sudden everything lit up on my dash. If your glow plugs are going, there'll be a like a yellow squiggly line on the dash when you turn your key backwards. It doesn't need it, it's a warm day today. Now some tractors, you don't turn your key to the left to start your glow plugs and preheat your fuel. It's important to do on a cold day, otherwise the machine doesn't want to start. On some of them, you just click them one click to the right. Your dash will all light up. We'll wait a sec here and wait to see if the little yellow squiggly line is yellow squiggling. In this case, again, it didn't need it. It's gone through all of its diagnostic stuff. The thing's ready to start. So, foot on the brake. Okay, so we've started the tractor, congratulations. We're almost there, ready to get out there and do some tractor stuff. Um, first thing you wanna do is just check your fuel gauge, make sure you got fuel, um, and make sure your RPM gauge moved. If it's not moving, we can have some problems while operating our tractor, uh, but make sure you got fuel. It's really embarrassing to run out of fuel on the field um, just because you didn't check, and it's really hard to restart a diesel um, after um, it's run out of diesel. So make sure you got fuel before you start tractoring around. Now, before we start moving, there's two things you gotta do. Number one, <laughs> grab your joystick and pull it backwards. That's gonna raise your lo loader. And we'll get into working the joystick in a minute here. But number one, raise that joystick. Get your bucket off the ground, otherwise you're gonna be carving the ground up or messing up your loader frame. So pull this backwards towards you. If it's mounted up here, press it down, it's gonna make that bucket go up. Down makes it go up. Backwards makes the bucket go up. So we wanna get the loader off the ground. You don't need it up in the sky, we just need it off the ground. So we'll do that first. The next thing you're gonna do is grab your three-point control, pull that all the way to the top to raise your three-point all the way up. If you have an implement on the back, it's gonna drag through the ground if you don't do that. We don't need to be grading everything in sight. You just want to grade the stuff you want to grade. So take this lever, put your hand on it, pull it all the way up. 
make sure your three point is in the air even if you don't have an implement on it get it up in the air it's a best practice it's just one of those things you should do every time you get on your tractor put your loader up put your three point up just make it automatic so you don't again go out and wreck something okay we're ready to start moving forward right no <laughs> there's so many steps here um i'm assuming your foot is still on the park or still on the brake right i mean we didn't say to take it off the brake so that should prevent the tractor from rolling on you so your foot's still on the brake i hope we'll want to release the parking brake <laughs> before you start moving forward right right i would think so keep your foot on the brake in this case this has a handbrake that we release push the button lower it down just like a car would have. This handle's orange. Usually the parking brake's gonna be orange. You might not have a lever over here next to your hip. You might have one somewhere down here. So let's identify where that parking brake is. Some of them, when you push your foot down and release, will just release the parking brake. But let's put your foot on the brake, keep it there. It's okay to be safe. The next thing we gotta figure out is, well, I hope we already would have already figured it out, is if you have a hydrostatic transmission or a manual transmission. Uh, manual transmissions will be called manual transmissions. They'll be car called gear drives. They might be called a shuttle. They might be called a hydro shuttle. They might be called a power shuttle. They might be called a power shift. Every stinking tractor manufacturer has their own fancy name for a manual transmission. And my advice, if you haven't already bought your tractor, buy a hydrostatic if you're a newbie. It's just easier. It's like an automatic transmission. The only real benefit of a manual, in a, especially on a compact tractor, which is what most people are buying, and if you're watching this video, you're probably buying a compact tractor. Now, the, the only real benefit to a manual transmission is if you're doing a lot of plowing, um, a lot of tillage, um, you know, there's some grading applications where it's more helpful, but by and large, a hydrostatic or automatic transmission on a tractor is way easier for just driving around, doing jobs, and doing loader work. Um, whereas a manual, you may get a little more power to the rear end. You could always just buy a, a higher horsepower tractor with a hydrostatic transmission and have a lot less headaches and in reality, less maintenance in the future. Okay, there's my speech on hydrostatics versus manual. Okay, gear folks, or, uh, manual transmission folks, hang out. We're gonna talk about how to move a hydrostatic tractor and it's easy. We're gonna pick a range. And we're gonna pick forward or reverse. Holy smokes, could it be that easy? Yes, it is. So, tractor's running. We've picked our, our range and we're gonna move forward with the tractor. That is how to move your tractor. Let's talk about how to work your loader. You've started the tractor, you've already lifted your loader off the ground, so you've learned one of the functions of the tractor. Congratulations. Or one of the, one of the you, have, you have learned one of the functions of the loader. Congratulations, we're getting there. <laughs> okay, what are these other functions? So, you pull this lever back or down, your loader goes up. You push your lever forward or up, your loader will go down. You pull it in towards you, your bucket will curl towards you. You push it away from you, your bucket will dump. Many, many tractors on the market can do two functions at once. So to do that, we would you know, kind of go at a diagonal, right? We, we would curl as we lift. Maybe you just push it straight to the diagonal and it's got a place where it clicks in. Maybe you've got to kind of lift and then go into your curl. Sometimes it takes a little practice. Now beyond, now beyond lifting, lowering, curling, and dumping, uh, most modern tractors also have a thing called float. And that is where you push this all the way to the down position and then push it one more time. And it clicks and locks in. What that'll do, it'll, so it'll make your loader bucket stay on the ground. So you can drive backwards and it'll just kind of keep pushing along the ground to help smooth things out. 
Now, if you want to learn more about how to use the float function on a tractor, um, you can look up uh, videos on like back blading and stuff like that. Back blading is normally when, when you would use a float function. There's some other reasons to use it, but usually not moving forward, usually just driving backwards. Um, you can kind of tear stuff up driving forward with the, with the bucket pushing itself onto the ground. Um, so if you ever get on your tractor and this thing seems like it's locked, it might just be in float. Just pop it back to release it from float. Pop it in to lock it, pop it out to take it out of float. And a lot of loader joysticks will have a safety control on them too, which will prevent this joystick from moving. If you press or pull something like this on it, it'll lock that loader into place. So if this is ever locked and you can't get it out of float or it's not in float, you may have a, a safety lock engaged. Now, on a loader, there's also a thing people talk about called a third function or a diverter. Again, we're not going to get real deep in the weeds here, but a third function or a diverter would put more hydraulics on the front that if you had something on the, on the front of the tractor that maybe would open and close, you could do that with a button or with, with a, a joystick. We're not going to get deep into it, but when people are talking about a third function, that's what they're saying. So two functions, one, two, and then another function, maybe with a button on the joystick, that would be a third function. Okay, so we know how to move the loader around. You can go get into piles of stuff, lift it, and, and lower it. Now, why is this tractor moving so stinking slow? Well, we left this lever all the way at the bottom, this throttle lever. Now, again, on a manual transmission, you're going to have just one pedal here. And when you push that pedal, your throttle's going to go up. But we're in a hydrostatic tractor. So we've got to raise this throttle to get our RPMs up. There is never a benefit to running it idle. In fact, it can be bad for the tractor. We won't get super into that, but there's situations on tractors where this would be non-beneficial. And on modern tractors, there's no red line. You can just put your throttle up. The higher your throttle is, the more power you will have. The more your loader will lift, and the faster it'll go. So by running that throttle up, your loader will lift much faster and have more power. And the machine will also have more power to move forward and backwards and pull things and push things. So it's always good to raise your throttle up. In most tractors, I recommend having the throttle over 15 or 1600 RPMs. I usually operate around 2000. So, we figured out why our loader was moving so slow. Now we're moving our loader faster. The tractor's moving around a little faster. We're getting the hang of it. But what about implements on the back? Well, let's check it out. Box blades, great tool. It is connected to our three-point hitch right now. So we've got our top link attached to it and our two lower links attached to it. You might notice that mine looks a little different than yours. I have what's called a Pat's quick hitch on this but it operates similarly to every other lower three-point arm connection, except this one hooks in. Yours, um, if you've got it fresh from the factory, will probably just have balls on the end of these arms. And pins push through those balls, just like they do on the top link, to attach everything together. And then we put a, a, a pin through here to keep everything from sliding out. So I'm not gonna get deep in the weeds on how to attach things um, to your three-point because I've done other videos on that and uh, you can certainly check those out on my page. But that's just a quick overview on the three-point. These are sway chains. These keep your, your load from flinging back and forth. Again, I did a video on this, but we're just taking a quick look again at this three-point. So this, you raise and lower with that lever that we already showed you right here. So, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you know how to push this up and down, your, your three-point implement will, will raise and lower. And again, um, you can affect the speed at which it lowers with the uh, little uh, knob that's between your ankles. That's your implement basics. Um, also, hooking up something to your PTO that's something we did a video on. 
So I would say, you know, if you're really, really ready to go out here and use implements, you can look at those videos on how to attach a box blade and how to attach a brush cutter or a rotor tiller to the back of your tractor. Okay, so you're driving around, you're moving your loader, you're using your three point, you're moving that around. Um, and then we get into a sticky situation. Oh no, what do we do? Well, you put this puppy into four wheel drive. So uh, four wheel drive might be electronic on your machine. You might have a button to push. You might have a lever to pull. You might have a, a plunger to pull. You might have a, I don't know. There might be a lot of things. On this tractor, it's a lever right here. You press this down, the tractor is now in four wheel drive. You pull it up, the tractor is now in two wheel drive. Uh, four wheel drive, you don't want to use on hard packed stuff. You don't want to use it on pavement. It'll, it can bind your front and rear ends and kind of grind them. Uh, you only want to use it in slick situations. More often than not, you probably don't need four-wheel drive unless you're in loose dirt or mud or really, really loose gravel or it's wet out or something. That's what four-wheel drive's for. But then let's say you're in four-wheel drive and you get really stuck. Your rear end's just spinning. Don't dig yourself a hole. Stop the tractor. Find where your rear locker is and push that down and then slowly move forward. Once you're unstuck, stop and release it. This will bind your two rear wheels together, the two rear, rear tires together. It'll bind them so they must move together to get you unstuck. Um, instead of one tire just spinning, it'll bind them together. You don't want to run around with your locker on all the time because they do need, your rear wheels do need to move independently of one another. Otherwise you'll destroy stuff. So you just use that locker when you're really, really stuck. And the four wheel drive, you don't want to kick on unless your tractor stopped as well, by and large. You just don't want to instantly slam that into four wheel drive. Okay, so we've kind of covered the, the basics of operating a tractor. Um, let's look at um, some optional stuff. Um, first, let's look at hydraulics, very popular stuff. So on the back of this tractor, is a thing we call rear remotes. So these are remote hydraulics on the back of the tractor. And these are what they look like. They're dirty, because they're always got hydraulic fluid around them, which attracts dirt. But I've got two sets of rear remotes, one and two. Um, it looks like we could put a, a third set on there. That might be fun. There's all sorts of stuff to do with remote hydraulics. For example, you could replace this with a hydraulic cylinder that would push back and forth and change the angle at which the blade comes in contact with the earth. Pretty cool. Now these are controlled up in the operator station with some levers. Here they are, a green lever and a blue lever which corresponded to the colors of the caps on those rear remotes. This one is on a spring, so you press it until you're done with it doing its function and then release and it will stop pushing hydraulic fluid through that port. So this is the bottom port and the top port. It might be the other way around. It might be the bottom port and the top port. I don't remember, but it does stuff. It squirts hydraulic fluid out of those uh, remote fittings there. Uh, this one is on a detent. So you press it and it stays where it's at. Hydraulic fluid will keep flowing through this port continually. It'll go out of here and in here, out of here and in here, out of here and in here, until you remove it from that detent. And pushing it the opposite direction would, would change the flow out of here, into here, out of here, into here, back. It, it keeps going in a circle until you release it from that detent where it's at. Okay, so that's rear hydraulics. Now, if you notice, I took a set of hoses here and plugged them into the green set of remote hydraulics. And this hose goes all the way up front down my loader frame and the end here. So we have a grapple for this tractor. That allows me to use that lever to make the grapple open and close. So instead of a third function, like we talked about on the loader control where we have a button to make it open and close. We're taking advantage of these rear hydraulics to move hydraulic fluid up to that grapple to open and close it. So I just reach down to this lever here 
and open and close the grapple. A little more convenient to have buttons up here, but whatever. It's a, it's a cheap way to do it, no big deal. Now, after hydraulics, there are a million other optional things that may or may not be on tractors, and we can't cover them all here. You know, tilt steering wheels, different auxiliary lights, just different buttons everywhere. Like, for example, here, there's a button for, for RPM crews. Um, we're not going to get deep into the weeds on stuff like that, but the last thing I will talk about is uh, if you have a tractor that's a modern tractor that is over 25 horsepower, um, you will have a regen system on your tractor. This is a, a federally mandated way, at least in the U.S., of controlling emissions coming out of the, the exhaust pipe of your tractor. Um, look up some videos on regen because after you get out and operate your tractor for a little while, um, you're going to kick into regen. And I have a lot of people who panic, turn off their tractors and call us thinking their tractor is broken because they don't know what the regen system looks like, what the light looks like, or how it works. We're not going to get deep into the woods or deep into that here, but I will recommend, hey, let's, let's find a video on Regen, R-E-G-E-N, and just learn about that system so you can be a complete operator of your machine. I think we've covered about everything you need to cover on just how to get on a tractor, get out there and start operating. Hope it was helpful. Um, if I missed anything, feel free to comment. If I got something wrong, feel free to comment. If I got something right, feel free to comment. Feel free to share this with your idiot cousin who thinks he knows everything about machines and keeps breaking your tractor. Feel free to do that. Cousin, you're an idiot. See, I'm saying it, you're not saying it. I'm on your side. Um, yeah, get out there and get your machine dirty and make sure you maintain it, for goodness sake. And uh, if your dealer did op accidentally drop it off at your house and not explain things, maybe they just thought you were a pro, call them up, give them a second chance, make sure you go out and read your, your manual. All right, y'all, we'll see you later. Thanks for hanging out with me.